Hello, uh, I'm Christophe Sautier, nice from being here to join us for this uh, session about Cloud Kitty. Um, Stéphane Albert here from Objective Libre, like myself. Um, and we're about to talk to you about this rating component for OpenStack. Um, before starting, um, who here has been uh, aware of Cloud Kitty before this morning when Mark Collier mentioned it? <laughs> uh, has anybody tried it? Okay, Good. we have some work to do, yeah. <laughs> uh, but we'll talk about that later. Um, for starting, uh, this is this one. Uh, for starting, um, let's talk a bit about Objective Libre. We have a service company based in France. Um, the company was founded in 2009, uh, and over the last few, few years, uh, we have about 30 here of gross every year, so we are doing quite well. Um, I think it's the thick OpenStack Summit we are attending, uh, and the third as a sponsor or something like that. We do a lot of uh, integration, deployment, trainings uh, with many people who are happy. Uh, I think, I think the, the numbers are something like 98% of the people who train, about 300 uh, are, 3,000 exactly, are very, very happy. Um, we are doing a lot of uh, research and development since it's about 13% uh, 30, of our income. And we are currently 11 with two branches, one in Toulouse, which is the headquarters where I live, and one in Paris. Um, our core subject, our core topics are clearly the Linux infrastructure and everything related to OpenStack. We have a quite a lot of expertise on various things, and co current OpenStack is clearly the main aspect that we are dealing with. Um, we are not just using OpenStack. We are clearly involved in the community on many levels. Of course, we deploy and we run cloud for some uh, customer doing consultancy and all the kind of things you can imagine like this. We also participate a lot on the community by doing some conferences or meetups or whatever you want like this. Um, we also develop and contribute. Uh, that's what about we are about to talk because we are the main developer so far. We hope that we may have, have a lot of other contributors in the next few weeks on Cloud Kitty. Um, so just to say it, Right now, we are quite happy and quite excited because uh, one month ago, Clockity just entered a big tent. So it is quite important for us, as you can imagine, that right now we are an official project of OpenStack. So we are clearly the official project to do the rating and chargeback solution. I'm quite sure that's why you are here. Um, Clockity has been developed since the beginning using all the OpenStack best practices. Uh, Stefan will detail a bit more in a few seconds the architecture we have in mind when we started <coughs> the project and that we applied. So we also integrate quite well with the rest of the OpenStack ecosystem that we have to, to deal with. Um, of course, we have some interaction with Celometer using the API to get some metrics, but not only. We have a great interaction with Horizon that uh, you are about to see in during the demonstration we are about to do. We are using all the library you need to use when you're doing an open source project. And we are really, really highly modular. We have four levels of modularity, and we will discuss about that in a few minutes. Um, using Clockity, can, uh, Clockity can be used at different level. Of course, you start to fetch information from Celometer or another metric resource. CloudKitty is doing its magic, let's say it this way, and then at the end, you can have some API or DCLI or whatever you want to fetch information on an admin view so that can define the rating policy, and you can also analyze, analyze, the, analyze, in English, analyze the cost information and the usage of your cloud from your users. If you're a user, of course, you can see the, re re the history of cost resource you did in the past few weeks, months, and whatever you want. And you can also have a predictive view of what you're, get, you're about to be charged 
for this kind of instance or resource you're about to launch. So before launching an instance, you will see the price you'll be charged for that. And after that, if you want to extract information using the API once again, you can. And that you can have some integration and post-treatment thing. But we'll, dis we'll deal with that in a few seconds. As I said, we have different level of interaction with CloudKitty. So depending the interest you have and the role you're having, you can have different interests using CloudKitty. If you're an IT manager, you might just want to be able to define the, the pricing policy for your customers. But you can also give a tool for your users to predict what, they'll, what the cost they will have when they are using your cloud. If you're a cloud provider, you want to make money using cloud, using your cloud. So you need to find a way to charge your customer. This is what is addressed by CloudKitty. Of course, it's multi-tenant, so you can charge your customer like you want. And once their, your customer has been using their, your cloud, you will have an, an analysis of this usage. But also, if you're an, an editor, if you're edit, an editor of uh, any solution that runs on the cloud, you can use CloudKitty because CloudKitty has been cons has been created to be highly integrable with all the interactions you want you might have. So if you are editing a software, you can just use CloudKitty to be your rating, rating and billing engine, not I even if not using OpenStack. So it's quite easy like this. Um, I will let Stefan uh, do the, the rest for this part and to explain you the different aspect inside CloudKitty. Thank you. So now that Christoph told you uh, all CloudKitty is working from an uh, IO view, I will show you what's inside and, and how it's working. So basically, uh, you want to uh, do some calculation on your metrics. For example, Silometer. We will soon integrate uh, Gnocchi support too. And um, you'll see all the steps that uh, CloudKitty is doing to create uh, your data ready for billing. So the first step is the tenant feature. So it's um, something modular. We added uh, the tenant feature to be able to uh, uh, remove the dependency on Keystone for CloudKitty. So for example, the, the base tenant feature is a Keystone tenant feature. So you will fetch all the IDs of, of the tenants that need to be uh, rated, okay? So it works with uh, V2 and V3, and basically it's fetching all the UID, so you apply a role on your client, so r the, f uh, the basic role is rating role, and automatically CloudKitty will fetch the, the tenant information and send it to the collector, which is the next, the next step to collect the data. So the collector uh, is responsible of uh, retrieving and aggregating all the data, uh, so it's pretty simple. It pulls the backend, for example, Silometer in the default configuration, and you pulls the backend every hour, for example, to see if there is new data and if you need to apply rating calculation on on uh, this data. It's highly modular, so you can have uh, any number of uh, collector you you want. You can use uh, Silometer and Yoki at the same time if you want, for example, or you can create your own collector if you have some specific data. Uh, that you might have in, in some of your database, uh, some uh, information on your client, and you, might, you want to apply specific rules based on this data, you can have external data. The next step is the rating step. So it's where all the calculation is done. Um, <coughs> basically, it's a, a list of modules, so you can have any number of modules too. And it performs calculation on the collected and aggregated data that you get from the previous step. And uh, you can set priority on uh, different rating modules. So basically, uh, you've got a list, and it's sequential based on the priority. So you can have um, a, a first rating module, for example, that is uh, modifying some data uh, to be able to uh, do s some more calculation later. Uh, all the configuration is made directly on the API. You don't need to modify any file. Uh, every module can expose its own API. So basically, if you want to create a, a rating module, and you need to have a complex API to be able to configure it. You just need to create a new API, and CloudTT will automatically expose it to the end user and operators. 
and uh, you can enable and, and uh, disable a module on the fly uh, from the API, so you don't need to uh, go to all of uh, your uh, cal uh, calculation nodes and restart the services. Um, the calculation is still consistent because uh, the new settings are only applied when the calculation is done, so you don't have inconsistency because settings change during the calculation. And again, it's modular. Uh, I will detail uh, some of the basic modules we've got for the rating in CloudTT. So the first one is HashMap. Uh, it's a pretty, si pretty simple module, I would say. Um, its goal is to apply calculation based on uh, the volume of your metric and some metadata. So you can uh, apply uh, mappings based on metadata or volume. Uh, for example, you can uh, query uh, data from your compute services and you want to apply a, a calculation based on the instance of time based on its flavor and rate uh, based on this metadata. So, for example, a uh, basic collector is kilometer, and you get all the data from the kilometer backend, and you can apply rules based on every metadata you get from kilometer. There is uh, threshold calculations too, so you can apply levels. Uh, threshold is really useful when you're doing uh, rating on network volume, for example, or um, cinder volumes. Basically, you want to change the price if uh, a client is uh, purchasing a, a bigger volume, so you can apply discount uh, based on the uh, levels. And finally, all the calculations are uh, decomposed in groups, so you can group all the previous match matchings you've done uh, in groups. For example, if you want to have a group for your instance of time, you will group all your calculation in instance of time group, and. Um, and another one for the volume, for example. But we will uh, see this later in the, in the demo. The new module that we added in, the, uh, in a, uh, a few weeks ago is PyScripts. Um, we had uh, some demands for this. Uh, basically, you can create your own Python script to do rating. So if you need to have some complex operation, uh, you just write a piece of code, you send it to the API, and it will distribute it automatically to all your calculation nodes. And finally, the last part, it's uh, uh, the storage. So its goal is to take all the data you've got uh, in the input and store it with the rated data. The goal is to have uh, the input just for legal purposes, so you don't only store uh, what's the final uh, result. You can, you can tell your, cli uh, your client the final result is this value because uh, the input was this. Uh, again, there is a, an API on top of the storage. So every backend got an API. You can query the API to get information for the tenant. All the tenants, you can apply fi uh, filters, so you can uh, easily generate reports uh, to send to your clients. By default, we are supporting SQL Alchemy. We hope to be able to uh, find a way to integrate with Gnocchi uh, during the, the Mitaka cycle. And again, it's modular. You can create your own backend. For example, if you want to send your data directly to your billing system, you can create your own module and send the data back to the billing system. So you can have a, a common API for Cloud Kitty and your billing system, and send the data directly to your billing system, and query the data directly from Cloud Kitty, which will fetch data from the billing system. And then you're done. Uh, your data is aggregated. You've got rates. You can uh, directly uh, show to your client uh, what is it in its consumption in Horizon, and you can do showback on the fly when he wants to create a new resource. Um, alongside with Cloud Kitty, uh, we are also providing and working on a, a report generator. Uh, like Stefan said, during the storage phase in Cloud Kitty, we provide a way to interact with your billing system. But um, not all billing systems are able to accept requests using API. So sometimes you need to provide to your billing system a simple, f a simple file formatted the, the way they want it to be. So that's what you do with the report generator. We provide a tool that will request the API and, pr and allow you to format uh, the file the way you want it. Um, we have multiple formats that we can provide. And by the way, we can provide multiple fi files at the same time, uh, like CSV. Um, that's why we decided not to... The idea behind this tool is that 
we don't want to provide another billing system. We don't want to create another ERP because all our customers and all the users of Locality already have their own ERP. So you, we clearly know that people won't change their ERP to use Cloudkitty. So we say, okay, instead of giving this brand new tool that they will that we have to use, let's say that we can operate with their own and existing system. And the end of the uh, and the fact is that at the end we provide a report that uh, you as user you can give to user directly if you just want to do chargeback, or you can give to your tool if you want to to create the bill. And of course, it's highly modular here too. Um, we're going to do a demo here. Um, since we are quite, uh, since we like to play games, we're about to do a live demo. Live demo yes. So um, let's hope it was quite good. But I'm quite confident. Yes, we'll see. <coughs> okay. So uh, just before starting, um, on the slide that we are about to, to provide here, uh, after the demo, you'll see that we have added um, a slide. Yes with the links to all the demo on YouTube, so that uh, you'll be able, if you don't have the time to, to see everything right here, you'll be able to download that on YouTube. And since the session is recorded, you'll be able to, f to look at the links during the video record as we made. Uh, I've got a question. Is it, uh, can you read what's on the screen? Or you, do you need to, do you want me to expand it? It's fine? OK. No, this way, okay. Is it better? Yes, okay, good. So we will create a, a basic rating rule to show you how it's working. So we go in the admin view, so there is, it's where you will set all your rating rules. <coughs> so you've got a new panel, which is named rating, and you've got a, a list of your rating module. Uh, there you can see uh, what rating module is loaded in CloudKitty and you can enable or, or disable it uh, on the fly. So we will mainly use HashMap, because I guess you don't want to see me uh, write Python during 10 minutes. Uh, so I will enable the module. Uh, you can have more information on the module. If you want to have its documentation, see its priority. And then we'll start um, creating our rating rules. So we want to uh, build our client based on um, the instance of time, so we'll do uh, I can't read what I'm typing. I guess it's good. So it's uh, based on the compute services, uh, which is uh, Nova Compute. And then we do mappings uh, on metadata. So we want to create a rule that will uh, build a client based on the instance of time and the flavor of the instance. So we'll do two mappings based on the flavor. And I live demo. <laughs> let, let me check again. Oh, I'm in the group view. I'm sorry. So fields. Uh, fields is a, a match based on metadata of uh, a resource. So yeah, it's flavor. I was in the wrong, uh, wrong tab. Flavor, and then we create two, two mappings, one on M1 tiny. I'm in the wrong tab again. So it's M1 tiny. And here we set the type to flat, so it's the base price for M1 Tiny. You can apply rates to if you do want to do percentages, uh, but we will do basic price pricing, so 1.5, for example. So it will be it will cost 1.5 per hour because in the, in our configuration we are pulling data every hour and aggregate, aggregating data, and we will create a new group that we will call instance uptime. to apply on all the calculations. So I will do the same thing for another flavor, m1.small, no, that's it, two, and again, I can set it in a group. Okay, that's fine. 
Uh, you can have information too on what's in a group, if you want, in a group view. So you can see all the calculations that will be done uh, for a group. And then uh, I will show you uh, uh, how you can define a threshold. So again, we create a new service mapping on volume. So it's in the volume in this case. We do service mappings. So service mapping is based on the raw volume of your metric, where field is based on the uh, metadata field of your uh, metric. Yeah, service mapping. Sorry, it's simple. It will be 0.9 per gigabyte, and we create a new group, so we don't uh, apply this calculation on the... Um you type 0.1. What? You type 0.1. Oh, okay. Yeah, all ones. It's better. And now we want to apply a discount on your client. So if is uh, the data generated and the data presented kilometer, you've got two volume. One is uh, 10 gigabyte and one is 30, uh, 20 gigabyte. So we'll apply apply on th a threshold on 15 gigabyte. So we'll have two different price. So 15 gigabytes, we apply a rate, so we do percentage, percentages. So 498, and we apply it to, your, to our volume calculation. Okay, so now we have set all our rating rule, and we will go in the demo view to see uh, what's the impact on the end user. Okay, so first thing I want to show you is uh, instance pri instant pricing, so you can get an, over an overview of what will be the cost. So for example, if I, I want to create a new instance, test instance, uh, like I said, we set two rules, one for M1 tiny and one for M1 small, so you can see that there is a, a new box on the bottom called rating information with the price. So if I change my fields, it will be updated on the fly. So your user can clearly see how much uh, a new instance we cost him. There is two overview. So a new, a new panel called rating. There is one, it's pretty empty at the moment. Uh, it's the current total, it's the total for the current month. So your client uh, know how much is he consumed for the current month. And the last one, <coughs> I'm sorry, is reporting. It's pretty slow. It's a dev stack on my, on my machine, so it's pretty slow. There is a, a huge load of data. Uh, it queries uh, the storage API from our eyes and gener generate graphs. So here we get graphs from the current user with spikes. And you can see uh, a breakdown of your consumption. So compute, for example, in volume here, since we only done uh, two rules. And you can get an overview of uh, what's your consumption. We'll go back to the last part of the session. Um, like I said, here is the link of the videos. We've cut it, this demonstration in four. Uh, well, like we did a live demo, it was it is not exactly the same one, but that's clearly the same idea. Um, we have some ongoing evolution, uh, of course, uh, for, the next, uh, for the next few months. Um, the first one, and Stefan already mentioned that uh, a few times, is that we are working with the guy from Gnocchi to get uh, the support of Gnocchi inside uh, Cloud Kitty. Yes. Uh, it will be clearly a huge step for improving the use cases that you can have in using uh, Cloud Kitty and the integration with Cellometer. Um, we also started to work on a new ba a storage backend so that we can have a, a better scalability. Um, but uh, the thing that people tend to notice the most is the graphical aspect. So we will continue to work on that. Um, we have two um, things that we are about to, to improve. 
The first one is the reporting. We have uh, many things that we have uh, in mind for improving reporting. And uh, also, um, we want to help the cloud provider or the people who are in charge of the OpenStack to have an easier uh, policy definition. Like you said, it wa like, it, like you just saw, it's not really complicated to define that, but it can be a bit tricky if you're not used to say, okay, which uh, group do I need to take and which name do I need to, to use and things like that. So we have uh, um, in mind something which is quite simple, I think. Yes. Um, um, actually, if you want to try Cloud Kitty, you can. We are providing uh, many repository for Debian Ubuntu, for um, Red Hat, uh, Red Hat uh, yeah, for the Red Hat Linux too. But uh, if you want to try it with DevStack, it's quite simple. Uh, you just have to do that, and it will be done. Uh, you put that in your side, your local conf, you start your stack ASH, and that's, that's it. Um, please, if you have any questions, come to visit us. We have a booth. It's uh, just between the two rooms. It's number T66. Uh, we have some stickers of Cloud Kitty here, but we have, two on we have some stickers too on the, on the booth. So we'll be really happy to give you that. Um, and we don't want to come back in France with them. Um, we also have some design sessions. Uh, one is tomorrow at uh, 2.40. It's on the Kotobuki room. Uh, and there's another one. But so please attend. And so that we'll be really, really happy to exchange with you so that we can be more aware of what you're looking at and what you're yes. expecting and what you need. Because sometimes that's something which is quite difficult for us to understand what you need. Actually, we will show more things uh, in the tomorrow session, because uh, the time is pretty short for yeah. the for this session, we have uh, screenshots of the new yeah. UI and the collector, so you can uh, see all the data that is coming in the collector, so you don't have to guess what will be the fields. Yeah, we have, we have screenshots for that because we already started to work on that. So we'd be more than happy to show you that. And then um, that's it. Do, do. <laughs> do you have any questions? <laughs> um, actually, uh, we started to work on Clocky something like m more than a year ago, more than a year ago. But uh, since we're just a small company, it's quite difficult for us to to get case. people through ears. <laughs> but uh, we are really happy that we've been able to enter the, the big tent because we really think it may be a, a huge speed up for the uh, for the project. Yes. Yes. So the, the question was, sorry, I didn't uh, yes. repeat your first question. The question was, uh, just for the record, um, what do you want to do if you want to rate just for the network? Yeah, I yes. want to rate according to network. You can do this. Uh, you've got all the metrics that you have in Silometer. So you just need to enable it in your collector and say, I want network usage, I want floating IP, or uh, I want uh, image, if a, a client can create image. You can do whatever, whatever you want. Uh, if the metric is present in Silometer, you can do it. If it's not present in Silometer, you can create a collector module, for example, that will pull an API and get you information, and it will store it in the storage backend too, so you don't have to uh, do tricky stuff, actually. Uh, actually, if you're working for, or if anybody of you is working with an SDN provider or a storage provider, we'd be more than happy to write the collector. And so we'd be more happy to, to, with, to, to talk with you to be able to integrate more and more data inside Cloud Kitty, and so that would be terrific for us. More questions? Uh, can, you, uh, can you customize the reading cycle? Yes. Uh, it's based on seconds. The, the so question was, can you customize oh, the bidding cycle? Yes, yeah, so uh, it's based, uh, there is a, a, f uh, a field in the configuration, so you can set whatever seconds you want. Is it, is it uh, what you were looking for? Uh, because uh, uh, you might uh, want uh, different bidding cycles for different customers, right? So, so yes, I see. Um, so, um, if you want to have different uh, billing cycles, it's not in the code at the moment. We are working on it because, uh, for example, when you're doing a network rating, you want to do, is, uh, to do it for the month 
for example, for the current month. Uh, at the moment, we are uh, applying calculation on every cycle. So if you say one hour cycle, your calculation will be done on every cycle. Uh, you can create your own module, for example, to exclude some cycle or aggregate the data uh, in the storage and query the storage and get your data back at the end of, man of, of the month. But it's not out of the box, out of the, out of the box at the moment. Kay. I think we have maybe time for just another question. In, in terms of scalability, um, how do you see things? A tricky question. Um, maybe not CERN scalable at the moment. Um, we are working on a new storage backend because we are doing uh, uh, storage the kilometer way, maybe not the best. And uh, we want to use Gnocchi as a storage backend to don't have to focus on how to store data and basically store directly um, a reference to the... Re uh, basically, we will have a new resource, which is a rated resource, and a reference, a uh, rating uh, rate metric, and a reference to the resource. So we don't, you don't have to uh, double uh, the, the data sources. But just as a side note, uh, we just received, and we will finish with that. We just received an email last week from a company we met, we met in Vancouver, telling, like, uh, telling us, okay, we are really happy with uh, Cloud Kitty, and we didn't know they were working on that. And uh, we've been able to use it to charge uh, many thousand of uh, instances already. So um, we're quite happy so far. Maybe it's not for your needs right now, but uh, I'm, it might be able to fit the needs for many, many people already. Okay, thanks a lot for attending it. Uh, you. If you have more questions, just come and talk to us.